All right, today we're going to do just a very simple little foam beetle. We're going to start out with a uh, Firehole 419 standard dry fly hook. I like them because they're barbless and they've got a very wide gap, which for panfish and basses is, is uh, a nice feature in a hook. But really, anything you want to use is going to do fine. Uh, standard dry fly or I've done them on a uh, 1X or 2X long dry fly as well and had them work out pretty well. We're going to uh, start out with... Uh, Vivas 140 thread, this time in brown because we're going to do a tan beetle. I do these in all different colors. I do them in black, yellow, tan, green. All of them seem to work well. Use whatever color you want. But we're going to start that thread on the hook and we're going to wrap it back to just about the point where the hook starts to bend. Maybe even a wrap or two into that bend. And we're going to trim that uh, excess off there. And then we're going to uh, start out, we're going to prepare some rubber legs for, for this guy. And I've been getting my rubber legs off of uh, silicone bass bug skirts, off of spinnerbait skirts, because uh, they're cheap. They come in a million different colors, and it's a very durable, stretchy material, so bluegills can uh, pull on those legs all day long, and you don't have to worry about them coming off or breaking. So what we're going to do, what I did is usually comes with the band in the center for using on a bass bug skirt. The first thing I do when I get these is I move that band up to the top so I have the full length of the legs to work with, but everything's still held together. We're just going to take one of these legs and we're going to snip it off so that we have that, that full length. And we're going to go ahead and prepare all of the legs for this fly at once. So what we're going to do is we're going to double this over. And we're going to cut that in half. We're working, well, I think we're going to cut this in half. There we go. Cut that in half. We're working with a size 10 hook today. So uh, this is going to be pretty proportional. You might want to change these proportions just a little bit if you're working on a bigger hook. On a smaller hook, I'd do it this way and then just trim those legs to size once you get them on the fly. We're going to double that half over and cut it. And then we're going to double the other half over and cut it. And that's going to give us all the legs we're going to need for this fly. We're going to start out with one of those. And we're going to double it over. And we're going to take that end that's... Uh, we're going to take the end of that loop and we're going to lay it down on the hook. And we're going to tie that in just right in at the bend of that hook. And if you do it right, those legs should spread back on just on either side of the shank of the hook. I do this for, for, for one good reason, and that uh, that's simply with the legs out the back here. When I'm done tying this fly, those legs out the back is going to give it almost kind of a mayfly-like, if you think of some of your heavier mayfly attractor patterns for trout, like humpies or irresistible wolves or something like that that's a real heavy-bodied fly. Those two tails out the back. So this is also going to uh, be a good fly for the uh, early mayfly hatches, too. It'll, it'll cover an attractor pattern for those and then work great in the summer as a beetle pattern. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some 2mm craft foam, and we're going to cut a strip out of it about approximately the width of the gap of the hook. And we're going to take that and we're going to cut just a little point into that to give us a, a good tie-in spot, a little narrower tie-in spot. And we're just going to lay that on top right where we tied those back legs in and we're going to go ahead and we're going to lash that down too start out with loose wraps to get that nice and even on the hook and then we can come back and and wind everything down kind of peel that up make sure those legs are still clear and they are good and then we're going to come in and we're going to make the body the body I'm going to do today it's going to be ice dub and pheasant tail I like the dubbed bodies, but you could use an Antron body, you could do just about anything you wanted, just about any dubbing you wanted if you wanted to do the dubbed bodies. But this is going to be a pretty thin body, so we don't need a whole lot of dubbing. Just going to do a, a short, thin noodle here. Oops, get that 
on there just a little better. And then we're just going to wrap that onto our hook. Build that. And we're going to come to a spot about two thirds of the way to the to the eye of the hook. We want to leave ourselves a little room. I'm going to put on just a touch more dubbing to kind of even that body out. It's not very even, so we're going to go in here with just a very tiny skosh more of that. And we're going to go back and we're going to even that body out just a little bit. So we're at a point about two thirds up from the bend of the hook, about a third of the way back from the eye. And we're just going to take that foam and we're going to fold it over. And we're going to catch it with a couple of turns there. That's going to give us the body in the back. And then we're going to find where the eye is at. And we're going to take and we're going to pinch that foam. We're going to give ourselves plenty of clearance at the eye, but we're going to pinch that. Make sure we can still see the eye there. We can. Everything's good. And then we're going to go ahead and bind that center section down. And that's going to be where our other sets of legs wind up. But we're going to do one other thing. We're going to put a wing on this fly. Because this beetle is going to sit real low to the water when we're done with him. And putting a wing on it gives something with a little elevation so it's a little easier to see where it's at on the water. I'm going to do it with, uh, with elk hair today. You could do this with... Uh, polypropylene yarn, you could do it with Antron, you could do it with uh, a lot of different things. I'm going to go ahead and get all of the uh, under fur taken out of there, any short little legs that we, short little hairs that uh, we don't want to mess with. Not a very big chunk of hair, just, just a little bit. We're going to stick that in our hair stacker here and we're going to even it up. Take a few good taps there comes out nice and even and then we're just going to measure that so that it's going when we get it on there it's just going to go back over the body just a little bit we're really important that we trim this to size before we tie it in because we don't have a whole lot of room there so we want to have that just so that when we tie it in it's just going to take up that space we're just going to take a couple of real loose wraps just to make sure that we've got it and then we can start to cinch down Make sure we get all those all those ends bound down really well. And you can see how that sticks up. Gives our fly a little a little height so we can see it on the water better. And with our thread back there at the at the back of that tie-in, we're gonna double our foam back. We're gonna catch that, give our beetle a little bit of a head here. And then we're just going to come in and we're going to trim that off right above where we tied it in just to give it a nice little collar. Kind of spreads that, uh, kind of spreads that hair out into a nice little wing. And then all we have left is to take a couple of these sections of rubber leg that we've prepared and get them in there for legs. And the best way to do that I've found is just to double those over the, over the tying thread. Get them pretty even. And then you can just use that to guide them into place on the fly and tie them in. We'll do the same thing on the other side with with another leg. And for those of you who are counting along at home, we've used three pieces of rubber leg material and we cut four, so we've got one left over for the next fly. You're going to want to do several of these so that's going to even out. Keep that one back and the next fly you do you'll you'll have it there. Got those legs in even like we like them. We're going to take a couple of wraps just to make sure that we've got that cinched down solid so that those legs aren't going to go anywhere. And we're going to throw on a quick whip finish. Make sure we don't pin any of those legs down with the whip finish. down there good. You could put just a spot of glue on those thread wraps if you wanted to but I find that the whip finish usually does well enough. The groove in that foam where that pinch down point kind of forces those wraps on that whip finish into place so they usually uh, take really well. And there we've got it. We've got our foam uh, foam beetle ready to ready to fish. 
go after bluegills, crappies. One of the reasons I do that little tail feature to imitate those mayfly hatches is that a lot of times early in the spring, rainy day with some mayflies hatching, you'll also find some schooly white bass. Uh, you know, smaller fish, young of the year last year, anywhere up to about 10 inches or so that are working mayfly hatches on the surface, and that can be a ton of fun too. There you go. Okay, so it's a little early in the year, but uh, it's really sunny, it's really nice. I've seen a few bugs out on the water last couple of days, so we've got our beetle tied on that we tied, and let's go see if we can uh, get something to eat it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to put this guy out on the water. We've got a little bit of a chop, so we're just going to let the fly sit out there on the water and drift with that chop and see if we can't get anything to, to eat it. If it makes a few passes and we don't get any bites, then we'll start putting a little action on it. Get those little rubber legs moving a little more and see if see if that doesn't entice something to come up and eat it. But uh, right now we'll just kind of let it dead drift out there and float on the breeze and see if something doesn't come along and make a meal out of it. We're just going to kind of work this patch through here. We've got a nice little shallow bay dark bottom so this nice bright sun ought to be heating that water up a little bit so we're just going to kind of lay that fly out out through here and just kind of work this whole patch to see what we can get to happen I just saw something come up and hit something a little bug on the water or something so maybe whatever it ate was a lot smaller than what we're throwing though so we'll see what happens Oh, there we had a hit. Missed him. They like him. We can splash that out there again and see if we can get him to do the same thing. Oh, he's taking it. Can't seem to get him to hook up. I don't think he's very big. But it's a good sign. A little sunken log there that he's hitting. Let's move up the log a little bit and see if something happens. Swipe at it. Missed it. Missed it. Clean. Took a swipe at it. There we go. Now we got one. We got one going here. There we go. Get a little of the moss off of him so you can see him there. We got our you know with the beetle. Not a very big one, but definitely good enough to get the get it going there we go so nice little fly doing pretty good for this early in the season okay so not much more than those few uh, hits we got earlier didn't uh, got one fish off camera little bitty guy so uh, but we got to see how the fly looked on the water. We got to see that fish will actually come up and attack it. And I'll probably close this video out with a couple of pictures from last summer with uh, a little better results. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Tie up some of those flies. I think they'll do you a lot of good. And uh, tight lines. We'll see you in the next one.